Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Very sleepy Onita here. And today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about all the popular YA book series I have not read yet. This will be split into two parts because I have a total of 26 YA series I have not read yet. And I'm also thinking of doing an adult like series, adult book version of this. Um, so yeah, this video is going to be part one to, of part two to the YA series I haven't read. You're probably wondering why I have not read some of these popular YA series before. And well, first of all, I haven't been reading as much as I have been now, these past two years, last year and this year as well. And there's another thing, um, the hype surrounding a lot of these YA series made me a little bit nervous and hesitant to read it. And another reason, bookshelf space and pricing because sometimes, actually not sometimes, it is a, a fact that ebooks are a little bit more cheaper than paperback and hardcover. So they are some of those reasons. But I feel like also that I'm missing out on some things because there are some YA series that sound really good and do sound like that I would enjoy. So all these books in part one and part two are books that I personally have an interest in and I think that I will enjoy. There is a lot of popular, very well-known series in here. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so I have my laptop here. I've got all the books on my laptop. First one is A Throne of Glass series by Sarah J. Matz. Senior role Salinas Adothian is beautiful, deadly, destined for greatness and is a trained assassin. But one day she makes a fatal mistake. She gets caught. She is serving a life sentence in the dark, filthy salt mines of Endovia when young Captain Westfall offers her a deal, her freedom in return for one huge sacrifice. She must represent the prince in a to-the-death tournament, fighting the most gifted thieves and assassins in the land. Whether she lives or dies, or wins or loses, Selena must be free. Selena will be free. And as she is about to discover her true destiny, will her assassin's heart melt? And I've heard there's a quite a bit of romance in here, but I think A Court of Mist and Fury, no, sorry, A Court of Thorns and Roses series is more romance heavy than Throne of Glass. Second book series I have not read yet is Shadow and Bone Trilogy by Lee Bardugo, as well as the Six of Crows duology and the other one as well. That's like King of Scars, that one and that duology as well. But I'm just going to focus on Shadow and Bone Trilogy, but also other books in the Grisha verse as well. Soldier, Summoner, Saint. Alina Starkov, orphaned and expendable, knows that she may not survive her first trek across the Shadowfold, a swath of a natural darkness crawling with monsters. When her regiment is attacked, Alina unleashes dormant magic not even she knew that she possessed. Alina enters a lavish world of royalty and intrigue as she trains with the Grisha, her country's magical military, and falls under the spell of the notorious lead leader, the Darkling. If Alina can master her untamed, untamed gift, the Darkling believes that she can reunite their war-ravaged country, summoning a force capable of destroying the Shadowfold. As the threat to the kingdom mounts and Alina un unlocks the secrets of her past, she will make a dangerous discovery that could threaten all she loves and the very future of the kingdom. Here is number three, the Scythe Trilogy by Neil Schusterman. Humanity has conquered hunger, disease, war, misery, and even death. And the task of keeping the size of the pollution population, that is my spelling, I apologize. Oh, I did that for. And the task of keeping the size of the population under control has fallen on Scythes. They are commanded to do so. Teens, Citra and Rowan are given a role that neither of them wants, to be an apprentice to the scythe. Must both learn to master the art of taking life, knowing that the consequence of failure could mean losing their own life. The Chaos Walking Trilogy, starting with The Knife of Never Letting Go by Patrick Ness, and has recently been adapted for a movie. Lord Hewitt is the only boy in a town of men. Ever since the settlers were infected with the noise germ, Todd can hear everything the men think and they hear everything he thinks. 
The Todd is just a month away from becoming a man, but in the midst of the cacophony, he knows that the only he knows that the town is hiding something from him. Something so awful, Todd is forced to flee with only his dog, whose simple loyal voice he hears too. The hostile men from the town in pursuit, the two stumble upon a stranger, an eerily silent creature. Two stumble upon a strange and eerily silent creature, that sounds better. Hey girl. Who was she? Why wasn't she killed by the germ like all the females on New World? Propelled by Todd's gritty narration, readers are in for a white knuckle journey in which a boy on the cusp of manhood must unlearn everything he knows in order to figure out who he truly is. An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir. Aya is a slave. Elias is a soldier. Neither is free. Under the martial empire, defiance is met with death. Those who do not bear their blood and bodies to the emperor risk the execution of their loved ones and the destruction of all they hold dear. It is in this brutal world inspired by ancient Rome that Lyra lives with her grandparents and older brother. The family exiled an existence in the empire's impoverished Basque streets. They do not challenge the empire. They've seen what happens to those who do. But when Lyra's brother is arrested for treason, Lyra is forced to make a decision. In exchange for help from rebels who promise to rescue her brother, she will risk her life to spy for them from within the Empire's greatest military academy. There, Leia meets... Is it Leia? Leia? Anyway. She meets Elias, the school's finest soldier, and secretly, it's most unwilling. Elias wants only to be free of the tyranny he's been trained to enforce. He and Leia will soon realise that their destinies are intertwined and that their choices will change the fate of the Empire itself. And that one, um, the series has just recently ended as well, so that would be a really good one to binge. You can't have tell this one is a fantasy because of the pronunciation of the names that I'm going to get wrong in this one, so I apologise. I think this one, um... This next one I'm going to be talking about is a duology, if memory serves me correctly. And that is The Wrath of the Dawn by Rene Ardier. In the land ruled by a murderous boy king, each dawn brings heartache to a new family. Khalid, the 18-year-old caliph of Khorasan, is a monster. Each night he takes a new bride only to have a silk cord wrapped around her throat to come morning. When 16-year-old... Now this is where I might butcher the pronunciation. Shahzad... Dearest friend falls victim to Khalid. Shahzad vows vengeance and volunteers to be his next bride. Shahzad is determined not only to stay alive but to end the Caliph's reign of terror once and for all. Night after night, Shahzad beguiles Khalid, weaving stories that enchant, ensuring her survival, though she knows each dawn could be her last. But something she never expected begins to happen. Khalid is nothing like what she'd imagined him to be. The monster is a boy with a tormented heart. Incredibly, Shahzad finds herself falling in love. How is this possible? It's an unforgivable betrayal. Still, Shahzad has come to understand all is not as it seems in this palace of marble and stone. She resolves to uncover whatever secrets lurk and despite her love, be ready to take Khalid's life as retribution for the many lives he's stolen. Can the love survive this world of stories and secrets? Well, that just sounds very interesting to me. And like I said, I think that one's a duology as well. I have a feeling I'm going to be needing some water. This next one I know is definitely a duology, um, not duology, a trilogy. And it has recently, like the last book in the trilogy has recently been released. That is the Curse Breaker series, starting with The Curse So Dark and Lonely. And I believe this is a um, Beauty and the Beast retelling. And this also has some disability rep in it as well because the main character has cerebral palsy. Fall in love, break the curse. Cursed by a powerful enchantress to repeat the autumn of his 18th year, Prince ran the heir of Emberfall. Thought he could be saved easily if a girl fell for him. But thus before he turned into a vicious beast hell bent on destruction. Before he destroyed his castle, his family, and every last shred of hope. Nothing has ever been easy for Harper, with her father long gone, her mother dying, and her brother constantly underestimating her because of her cerebral palsy. Harper learned to be tough enough to survive. When she tries to save a stranger on the streets of Washington, D.C., she's pulled into a magical world. Break the curse, save the kingdom. Harper doesn't know where she is or what to believe. A prince? A curse? A monster? 
As she spends time with Ren in this enchanted land, she begins to understand what's at stake. And as Ren realizes Harper is not just another girl to charm, his hopes his hope comes flooding back. But powerful forces are standing against Emperfall. And it will take more than a broken curse to save Harper, Ren, and his people from utter ruin. This next one is a another very popular um obviously that's the name of the title of this video. And this one is a sci-fi, so I should have said it in the beginning, but I have a mixture of sci-fi, fantasy, I think there's also like um, crime mystery, I think there may be like one or two historical fictions in here as well. So this one is Illuminae Files by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This morning Katie thought breaking up with Ezra was the hardest thing she'd have to do. This afternoon her planet was invaded. The year is 2575 and two rival Mega corporations are at war over a planet that's little more than a speck at the edge of the universe. With enemy fire raining down on them, Katie and Ezra, who are barely even talking to each other, are forced to evacuate with a hostile warship in hot pursuit. But the problems are just getting started. A plague has broken out and is mutating with terrifying results. The fleet's AI may actually be the enemy. And nobody in charge will say what's really going on. Never trust AI. As Katie hangs into a web of data to find the truth, it's clear the only person who can help her is the ex-boyfriend she swore she'd never speak to again. I'm told through a fascinating dossier of hacked documents including emails, maps, files, IMs, medical reports, interviews and more, Illuminate is the first book in a heart-stopping trilogy about lives interrupted, the price of truth and the courage of everyday heroes. The next one is from the same authors as before, and that is the Aurora Cycle. The year is 2380, and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams, but his own, but his own boneheaded heroism sees him struck with his, oh, sees him stuck with the dregs nobody else in the academy would touch. A cocky diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm. A sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting her bunkmate. She sounds like fun. A smart-ass tech wizard with the galaxy's biggest chip on her shoulder. An alien warrior with anger management issues. A tomboy pilot who's totally not into him, in case you were wondering. And Ty's squad isn't even his biggest problem. That'd be Aurora Jailin O'Malley. The girl he's just rescued from interdimensional space. Trapped in cryosleep for two centuries, Ori is... Ori is a girl out of time and out of her depth, but she could be the catalyst that starts a war millions of years in the making, and Tyler's squad of losers, disciplined cases, and misfits might just be the last hope for the entire galaxy. Not the heroes we deserve, they're just the ones we could find. Nobody panic. That actually sounds really good, and I've heard really good things about it as well. That has really intrigued me a lot. It sounds like it might be a little sarcastic with its... Writing just that last line there, they're not the heroes we deserve, they're just the ones we could find and nobody panic. That sounds, that, that has definitely piqued my interest up a lot. Folk of the Air series starting with The Krill Prince by Holly Black. Of course I want to be like them. The beautiful is blades forged in some divine fire. They will live forever. And Cardin is even more beautiful than the rest. I hate him more than all the others. I hate him so much that sometimes when I look at him, I can hardly breathe. Yeah, well I'm struggling to breathe too, but it's not because of a very good looking fella. It's because I'm overweight. Well, I'm not that bad, but I could do better. It was seven when her parents were murdered and she and her two sisters were stolen away to live in the treacherous high court of Fairy. Ten years later, Jude wants nothing more than to belong there, despite her mortality. But many of the Fae despise humans, especially Prince Cardin, the youngest and wickedest son of the High King. To win a place at the court, she must defy him and face the consequences. As Jude becomes more deeply embroiled in palace intrigues and deceptions, she discovers her incapacity for trickery and bloodshed. But as betrayal threatens to drown the courts of fairy and violence, Jude will need to risk her life in a dangerous alliance to save her sisters and fairy herself. So it sounds like hate to love romance, which we all know and love. Well, a lot of us do anyway. Damn, okay. Sounds interesting. Uh, this next one is a... Is it a quadrilogy? Quartet, I believe it is. I don't know if this one is popular. Like, I've heard one 
booktube but absolutely gush about the series and um i've got to admit it does sound quite intriguing like for me and that is the three dark crowns by kendar blake when kingdom come there will be one in every generation on the island of fenburn a set of triplets is born three queens all equal heirs to the crown and each possessor of a mag of a coveted magic Mirabella is a fierce elemental, able to spark hungry flames or vicious storms at the snap of her fingers. Catherine is a poisoner, one who can ingest the deadliest poisons without so much as a, a stomach ache. Arsenine, again, kind of told us a bit of a fantasy. A naturalist is said to have the ability to bloom the reddest rose and control the fiercest lion lions, I should say. But becoming the queen crowned is not solely a matter of royal birth. Each sister has to fight for it. And it's not just a game of win or lose, it's a life or death. The night the sisters turn 16, the battle begins. The last queen standing gets the crown. Ooh, we're up to the last two. Okay, so this next one is an ongoing series or an ongoing universe. And I don't know which one to start off with. But I'll just say the name of it anyway. It's the Shadowhunters series or universe I should say by Cassandra Clare so like mortal instruments, dark artifices, infernal devices, the last hours like that's that's the four main ones isn't it? I know the last hours is a new released one the second book came out not long ago actually in that series I went to an independent bookshop like years ago and they had like a little sampler on their bookshelves for Lady Midnight and I had always had a bit of an interest in the Shadowhunter series but like I said being a long series not having enough bookshelf space I just didn't get to it. And I've always been very intrigued by the Shadowhunters universe and I don't think I need to tell you much about what they are because one I don't really know where to start off with and two I think everyone knows about the Shadowhunters series so I'm not gonna I'm not going to talk too much about it, but I do have a very high interest in it. And like I said, I don't think I finished saying it before. I read a little sampler of Lady Midnight, I believe it was. And it really grabbed my attention. And I wanted to know what was happening. But I thought I better not start from that one. I better start somewhere else. Last one. We are nearly finished. And again, this is a popular one. One I've had my eye on for a while because it really sounds interesting. Inner Chronicles, starting with Cinder by Marissa Meyer. I think each book is following like a different princess or something like that. I think it's like retelling, so Cinder would be a retelling of Cinderella, I think. Like, I think that's how the series goes. Humans and androids crowd the raucous streets of New Beijing. A deadly plague ravages the population. From space, a ruthless lunar people watch. Oh, from space, a ruthless lunar people watch, waiting to make their move. No one knows that Earth's fate hinges on one girl, Cinder, a gifted mechanic, is a cyborg. She's a second-class citizen with a mysterious past, re reviled by her stepmother and blamed for her stepsister's illness. But when her life becomes intertwined with the handsome Prince Kai's, she suddenly finds herself at the centre of an intergalactic struggle and a forbidden attraction. Caught between duty and freedom, loyalty and betrayal, she must uncover secrets about her past in order to protect her world's future. And that is it, everyone. That was the last one. Thank you so much for watching. I will get to these series in like the next couple of years or so. I, the interest for these are high. After reading them, some of them are a little bit higher than others. But I do have a very strong interest and a very strong need to get to a lot of them. So part two will probably come out same time next month, hopefully if all goes well. Like I've got it all set up, I just don't want to film it right now. Um, and let me know down below in the comments which series is your favourite, if you've read any of them, which one you think I would like and where to start off with. Be sure you leave a like if you like the video. If you want to subscribe, you can do so. You don't have to, but the option is always there if you want to. And I have my social medias linked down below if you want to follow me on any of those. I do need to get better at posting though. So bear with me. I will get there.
I was actually pretty good at posting on Instagram, but who the bloody hell knows? Probably my self-doubt and everything, but yeah, that will be down below if you want to check that out. And I will see you in the next video. Bye. They've seen what happened. Blah. They've never... Oh, for fuck's sake. In a land ruled... In a land ruled by a mer... It's an unforgivable bull. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, for goodness sake. This morning, Katie thought breaking up with Ursa is reserve Plague has broken out and is mature, mature, maturing. A cocky diplomat. Diplomat. Ori is a girl out of a. Sp but she could be the catalyst that starts a war. Oh my god, I'm so tired. Nothing is making sense. Becoming the crane. What's a crane?